their current intentions towards you what do you need to know what message is here for you today this is my first reading of the day we've had our pint of water and a handful of vitamins no caffeine this morning if you know why you know why <laughs> so what are their current intentions towards you what do you need to know got the page of swords we've got the fool and we've got the eight of cups reversed this person this person fancies you so much this person is absolutely terrified of commitment labels they kind of they've been making you some promises lately and they're kind of promises that they're not sure if they're going to keep or not and this person is just like oh my goodness but I'm going to turn this the right way up because I love these cards. With the Eight of Cups reversed, there's lots of fantasy and there's lots of recklessness. There's lots of playfulness with the fool. This person's really very attracted to you. But it feels like every, try, every time you try and pin them down on what is this? What are we doing? Are we dating? Are we in a relationship? What are we doing? They avoid it. They're, they're just avoiding the question. And it feels like every time you want to talk about anything serious, they just don't want to. They may kiss you. They may change the subject. They may deflect, deflect in some kind of way. So where do we go? Let's go here. What do they want to say? If they could say anything to you at all, what do they want to say? I have got a Sunday special on for Sunday the 14th of January. Um, there's only lim <laughs> there's limited spaces. Once they've gone, they're gone. But it's there. It's for a 20-minute reading. Um, and it'll be delivered by 8pm on Sunday. I'm trying to beat the January blues. But what do they want to say to you? Welcome to Hope Tara Daily. By the way, my name's Angie. I like to introduce myself so that we know, so that you know who I am. I left when I saw you with somebody. Oh, okay, so they get jealous when other people are around. I don't react when people mention you, so they're burying their feelings. Um, the timing wasn't right for us. So, okay, this person... Okay, they don't put a label on it, do they? They won't put a label on it because that terrifies them. But what they're beginning to realise is what scares them more is if you're talking to somebody else, if you're getting to know somebody else, because they've left that gate open. They're also now worried that someone else is going to come through that gate. And so to close that date, they need to progress the connection along with you. I'm going to call it a relationship because that's what it is. Just because this person's shy about labelling it, the things that you two are doing is a very much a relationship. But this person is slowly, slowly getting jealous. They're slowly, slowly getting jealous. So when they think that you're talking to somebody else, they get jealous, but they don't do it in an obvious way. It feels like a passive aggressive way um, and it feels like they t they ask you lots of questions about other people or they don't ask you anything they just start being really sulky so break up separation stop the pattern silent treatment and abandonment see that's what they do to you when they think that you're talking to somebody else or if if there's anybody else around they kind of threaten to cut you off they kind of freeze you out it's very manipulating you know Talking, interested, conversing more, awaited messages arrive, text, call, email. Yeah, my goodness. And then we have seduction, attraction, flirting, dating, hooking up, temptation, third party interference. They're terrified that a third party is going to come in and, and, and snap you up. Now, what hasn't been working is, well, it has been working. They're, when they push you away because... 
when they go silent and they do all of the manipulating stuff, when you talk to somebody else and they start, this person starts sulking, that isn't working. So at some point they're going to have to start actually talking. At some point they're going to have to actually start using their voice and telling you what they want from you. Are they going to commit to you? Are they going to swallow their pride? Are they going to do the thing that you need them to do? Because it feels like they sulk with you a bit and then all of a sudden they come in strong again. When they've got their eight of cups reversed and it's they want something, they come back in. They're not shy for asking it. They're not shy for taking it there. And then it feels like they get quiet again. Can they come in and be more consistent or are they just messing you around? Do they have any intentions of a relationship? There's going to be a transformation when it comes to this. The Three of Swords reversed. If they're not careful, they're going to get their heart broken. And the Knight of Cups reversed. <clears throat> it kind of feels like when we get into a pattern with somebody or when we get into a cycle with somebody, once we've been around that cycle a few times, because it feels like you've been around it a few times with this person, they refuse to put a label on it, and then they get jealous and get humpty dumpty, and they kind of go quiet on you and sulky because they think there's other people around. But, oh, they come back in again. And when there's a cycle and a pattern like that, and it's been around enough times, when you're in the sulky phase, you know the next thing that comes is the pulling you back in again, making sure that you're still theirs, making sure they've got your attention, making sure no one else has your attention. But boom, they then close it off again. They go quiet again with the Knight of Cups reversed. They pull it all away again. And sometimes it's, I think it's now getting to the point where they just pull away for the sake of it. So while you're in this cycle with this person, whatever the cycle is at the moment, you will know what comes next. There is a transformation coming. And if anything, it feels like you breaking free from this. It feels like you stopping that cycle. You going, I know when they come in with this, you want it more than anything. But if you don't want, if you don't want the confusing, then they cut you off. Don't let them have that shut them down, ignore them, make them wonder, like, why, why are we not doing this? Why are we not doing this? And then see what, what comes of it. And it feels like you're the one that can bring the transformation. Now, the transformation will either be you end up cutting this person off because this is all they're going to give you, or it will trigger them into a relationship. It will make them want a relationship but then I'm looking at them thinking do you really want a relationship with somebody who is really sulky because when you live with somebody like that oh my goodness it's hard work and a relationship should be 50 50 it should be talking it should be being grown-ups it should be sharing it should be a lot of things and I'm just wondering if that person is the fool and the page of swords they find they will find it really hard to have a grown-up relationship because they're really petty they're so petty but then there's something about them that you like and it feels like the cycle's got to go around a few more times but now that you recognize the cycle you're the one that has the strength to break it because they'll keep dragging you around in it so that's what I have for you today I hope that it helps in some way I'm gonna wrap you in a massive bubble of protection so your angels take you on your way if you've made it to this point you're now part of my secret purple heart gang i think you're amazing whatever you do this weekend i hope you have a nice weekend if you're watching this in the future it is a timeless reading this morning i woke up to a load of cat sick on my bedroom floor so that was absolutely fantastic i hope you're not having your breakfast but yeah i don't know what point during the night she done that but it looks, and it was right next to my clean washing. I've got a stack of clean washing on my bedroom floor that needs to put in away. And it was right next to them. And I just sat on the edge of my bed looking at it thinking, first of all, I'm glad I didn't get up in the dark and stand in it. Secondly, she got it right next to the washing instead of on the washing. And then it looks so she'd then just got into her cat bed that's on my bedroom floor at the moment, which is a car, which is a paper bag. That's what she's sleeping in at the moment. That's her chosen 
We've got fluffy beds for her everywhere. Will she sleep in them? No, she won't. I've got a pretty little tuxedo cat called Rosie. If you've got a pet, let me know what they are, what their name is and what kind of character they are. I will see you soon.